Hello. Um, so I am Alex Carver. I am a VMware Solutions Architect with Peer Storage. Um, today I'm going to kind of go over a topic of uh, converting RDMs to VVols. So uh, with the adoption of VVols and some of the great benefits that a lot of customers have been having, one of the lingering things that have been left on RDMs have been the uh, Windows failover clusters essentially because uh, Initially with VVols, um, they didn't support SCSI 3 reservations, and that was something that was kind of holding back those parts of it. And with uh, ESXi 6.7, uh, specifically Update 1 and Update 2, uh, they had introduced the support for SCSI 3 reservations. And so that you could actually get some of these Windows failover clusters moved off of RDMs and onto VVols themselves. Up there? All right. So can't be over there. Okay. So some of the text is a little bit small, so I... I'll be like doing that for it, I guess. Um, so uh, here we go. There we are. So um, I do have a Twitter handle and a blog. Um, after this, I'll actually be adding some stuff to my blog, the more videos and demos of different workflows for running through these, um, because there are some different options that you have for it. And then what we're going to be going through, just a really, really super brief VVols overview, just in case it's a first time hearing VVols, which this isn't your first VM world, you probably have heard about VVols for like four or five years now. So, um, and then uh, why move RDMs to VVols? What are your options? And then what about a Windows failover cluster? Um, just as a disclaimer, some of the stuff I may show may be kind of peer specific, but I, I try to make it as it vendor agnostic as possible, right? VVols, it's, it's gonna be the same concepts, vendor to vendor. So. Um, if you happen to have a vendor that's not pure storage, um, you know, you can talk to them, just double check with them. Hey, this process that I kind of went through, I'm um, just making sure it's going to be perfectly fine with your vendor. And it should be um, as much of this stuff here, just trying to be as vendor agnostic as possible. All right, so just a quick VVOLS overview, uh, really just what they are. So essentially, if you try to take a, a Take a step back and take a full picture of it. Uh, VVOLs are the ability to have um, the vSphere environment have insight directly to the storage layer itself and to be able to communicate directly to that storage. And so if we kind of look at it, um, you have that control path or management path of that BASA communication, which is a vSphere API for storage awareness. And then within there, there's the data path, so the actual volumes connected to the vSphere environment. And then what really happens is whenever a VM is created within VVols, is it just doesn't create those VMDK files in a VMFS data store. It's creating volumes directly on the flash array itself. Similar to an RDM, the VM has direct access to the device itself. There's no VMS, uh, th there's no uh, VMFS file system, kind of redundant there, I guess, or VMDK encapsulation on it. It is the guest OS writing directly to those devices, just like an RDM. And so it gives you some data mobility, but because vSphere does have that insight to what's going on there, you then are able to take advantage of storage policies and doing storage policy-based management, just applying those policies to the VMs, leveraging array-based replication um, and snapshots. Managed snapshots aren't just a bunch of, you know, SE sparse files and Delta files on that VMFS data store, rather they're actually volumes on the flash array itself, or the storage array itself, I should say. Um, so, Kind of looking at it, you have those different volumes, and the one we really care about here is the data vol. So this is an actual, your data volume is on the flash array, and whatever guest OS you have is actually writing directly to it. Um, and then there's a swap if it's powered on, powered off. If you're taking a memory snapshot, it creates a memory volume itself. So why, why convert these RDMs? Um, it's a good question. I mean, if they're working and everything's happy and your DB admins are happy, why change it? Um, uh, one of the big reasons, as I mentioned before, would be the storage, storage policy-based management. And with those storage policies, being able to have that granular control, it's no longer a, well, all these you know, VMs are going to share the same policy or same snapshot or replication policy on the storage array because they're on the same data store, but rather I can have granular control even at a VMDK level. Maybe I want one, VMDK, or one data VVOL or VMDK in that VVOL VM to have five-minute replication. But that other one, you know, I can have a one-day replication on it. You get very granular control at a per VMDK level rather than just, you know, a data store level and a group of VMs or a per VM level. So it gives you a lot more uh, flexibility as a vSphere admin to help manage that. And you don't have to, 
you know, put in a request to the storage admin or as a storage admin, you don't have to wait for the request from the vSphere admin to say, hey, these volumes and these devices need to go in that protection group. Rather, the storage policy automatically moves those volumes into that replication group or consistency group, whatever the vendor calls it. We like to give like 20 names to the same thing. It's industry standard. Um, the other thing is insight directly from vSphere to the storage. So, and kind of vice versa, I mean, you're gonna know what the VM name is if you're a storage admin, and hey, this volume all of a sudden exploded in 20 terabytes over the weekend. I, I know exactly what VM did it and who owns it, so. Um, another part is that utilize managed snapshots. So that is something that with RDMs you weren't able to do before. Now the caveat to that is if you have SCSI controllers that are doing a sharing, so physical or virtual, you can't use managed snapshots still. However, you can then leverage array-based snapshots and actually have the automation within vSphere. I mean, prior to this, like uh, if you had RDMs, you would still need to be into the storage array or have access to it to get those snapshots or replication kicked off. Now you can still with storage policies or with integrations um, uh, with vSphere, you can actually take those array-based snapshots and even restore from them and, and those sort of things, uh, such as importing a data vVault to another VM or recovering it. So if you need to do a database refresh, you don't have to all of a sudden copy out that VMFS data store to a new volume, connect it, rescan, find the VMDK, or resignature it, find the VMDK, copy it over. You know, you can actually do this stuff you know, directly within the actual uh, PowerCLI, PowerShell scripting or from the UI. Um, and then the ability to use PowerCLI or VRO to do a DR failover. So maybe you want to do a test failover or a DR failover um, with these uh, storage policies. And so that gives you the ability there. Um, there we go. So this is just a screenshot from the a vCenter um, UI, the HTML5 one, with the uh, pure uh, with the pure storage uh, UI, or not UI, uh, plugin that's installed on there. And so from this screen, you can actually have the option. Boop, boop, come on. There we go. So to import a disk. So if there's another VM, you want to import a disk to it, or you took a snapshot of another one, you can do that. Creating a snapshot, um, overriding one. So maybe you took a... You know, you used some uh, file QSing or you persisted that down, you took a snapshot, you're like, oh, I need to roll back to it, so let's go ahead and override it. Or someone deleted one accidentally, you have the option to then recover it. So some of those integrations, each vendor may have a different one or some different parts of it, but these are built right into there. So what are your options? So kind of the important part, um, how can I convert an RDM to a vVault? So there's a couple part of it. Thing to keep in mind, it's not really non-disruptive. There's not a way to just do this perfectly where you're online the entire time. That's kind of the cruddy part here. Um, there is gonna be some kind of downtime. Now, depending on how you are using RDMs, it depends on how long that could be. You know, if, you are, you, if you're not using virtual or physical sharing, the downtime is the amount of time it is for you to maybe uh, offline whatever role or application or database you're using. Uh, remove the PRDMs, uh, physical RDMs, add them back to virtual RDMs, and then online everything again. So once they're back as virtual RDMs, you can just storage vMotion into vVols and you're done. And then it's on vVols and you're good to go. But again, if you're using share, uh, SCSI controllers that are in sharing mode, you can't do that. So um, if you have a target, RD, RD, um, a target VM that you can copy them to, so maybe you don't need the boot volumes, you can go ahead and just uh, offline the role copy those RDMs and overwrite the target uh, vVol VM data vVols, and, and you're good there. But if you need those boot volumes and the entire VM moved over, um, you're, you're gonna need to basically have a couple options that try to move it over and, and have the least amount of downtime. So the one that has a little bit more downtime is you remove the shared disks from the node two, uh, for instance, and then you go ahead and take node one, uh, remove all the PRDMs, remove the SCSI controller that has physical sharing, add them back as VRDM, storage vMotion it, and then reset it up as a physical sharing and all that stuff. That's gonna take more time. Um, it's a little bit simpler from like a, a multi-step process, but you're gonna have a little bit longer. So if it's a really important application, you're not gonna be able to sell that very well. Option two, um, 
essentially what you'll do is you're going to create these placeholder VVOL VMs. And then what you can do is you can offline one of the nodes one at a time. So your role's still up and your application or uh, whatever's clustered role is still up. And you'll offline one of the VMs. And what you can do is then you can copy the boot VMDK over to that VVOL VM. And then what you'll do is you'll add it as an existing disk, find the boot volume, and it's there. And so you copy over the boot volume. You can power back on that VM and then add it back in and you're good and then repeat the same thing with the other node. So this allows you to keep the cluster role running while getting the target VVOL VMs set up. Um, yeah, and after the boot uh, VMDKs are copied over on node one of the VVOL VMs, you can then kind of create those placeholder like witness or uh, MSSQL data log, etc. And there's not going to be anything in them, but they need to be the same size because what you'll be able to do after that, come on, is you can make sure, like, and then make sure they're using a shared SCSI controller. You'll set it up just like you would normal RDM set up there. Ah, here we go. And once that's complete and you're ready to copy over the RDMs and overwrite those placeholder ones, then you could offline the role and offline the witness disk, etc. And from there, you will then go to the array. Um, so if you need to work with your storage admin or you have access to it, you would copy and overwrite those empty VVOL data, uh, data VVOLs on those VMs. And as you overwrite them, those roles will, there be, uh, will be there. So you can power on into an isolated network and make sure everything was there. Or if it, well, you know it's going to work, power off the old one, power on the new ones, and then make sure everything's running and good. Um, while there are a lot more steps here, it is something you could orchestrate a little bit um, with PowerCLI or Python and PyV Mommy um, and, and those kind of things. I, I don't have a de I obviously don't have time to go through a demo of it right here, but it is something that I'll have on my blog and walking through those ones in detail. And tomorrow at the Pure Storage booth at 2 p.m., I'll be running through a, a demo as well of it, of actually running through this process. So it is something to try to show it. Um, as a conclusion and closing thought, yeah, it's a pain in the butt to kind of convert those ones, and it's a hard sell, especially telling someone that they're going to have to offline something or have change control. But once they're on VVOLs, you're not going to have to worry about doing that process again, and you're going to have a lot more flexibility and ability to have insight from one side to the other. But, um, yeah, resources, all of our uh, VVOL KB stuff, uh, Pure Storage is public content, so you can just log in and look at it. And we should have more stuff that covers this as well in the future. All right. There we go.